Are you looking for ways to work with PSD files or edit photos on your iPad and you don't have that Creative Cloud subscription? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you my top alternatives to Photoshop on the iPad Pro. Welcome to the video. Now, if you're into design or video production, consider subscribing to the channel because that's what we're all about. Now, if you own an iPad and you're looking for ways to either edit PSDs or kind of have that Photoshop experience on the go with your iPad and you can't afford the Creative Cloud membership or you just don't like using it, then I'm gonna show you my best alternatives for Photoshop for the iPad. I've got two free versions and two premium paid versions and I think the last one is really going to surprise you. Now, if you've used Photoshop for the iPad before, you'll know it's pretty good, but it even has some elements which are missing from the desktop version, such as custom brushes. So some of these apps may be the answer for you. So before we jump in, I know some of you are probably thinking, hang on, I didn't even know Photoshop existed for the iPad. So if you didn't know that and you wanna see our full review of Photoshop for the iPad, you can click up here and see that full review. But anyway, um, Photoshop for the iPad is pretty good. It is missing some features. So anyway, let's jump into our first pick for your first alternative to Photoshop on the iPad. Okay, so the first app is called Pixelmator and it costs just $4.99. Okay, so let's open up Pixelmator. Um, what's great about this is you can import PSD files and I'm gonna do that now. So let's import a thumbnail, which we're gonna use for this video. Uh, this is a PSD file created in Photoshop on the desktop. And you can see what's great here. You've got all the layers. You've got the option to adjust color. So let's say we wanna adjust the background color here. You've got the sort of tool section here. We can adjust the colors there. And then we've got some really nice, just simple, fast, ways to adjust colors, brightness, all the kind of things you would expect from a Photoshop alternative. Let's apply that. You have options at the top here to paint an eraser. If you wanna get rid of any blemishes in photos, you can do that. You can retouch, you can distort, you can add effects, crop, all of the, the basic tools you would expect in Photoshop. And I think this is so powerful, it's so fast. Uh, you've got options for fonts, you've got uh, different backgrounds, you can import images and, and bring those on. Let's just bring this bottle of uh, spider spray here. You can see how quick it is as we zoom in and out. I'm just gonna delete that. And then this text has been brought in from Photoshop. So this is one of the only problems is that sometimes the fonts uh, don't pull in the same fonts from Photoshop, but we can now change this to a different font. So if we go up here, you'll see when you go back to the formatting option, now I've selected this text, you can now alter all of the options for the text here. So we can change this font and let's change it to say, DIN alternative, and you can see the font has changed there. And it's all looking pretty good. Okay, so that's Pixelmator for the iPad. Now, it's pretty good as you can see. The only downside is that I sometimes find when I bring in PSD files that already have layered text in them, uh, they don't always work as I'd expect and sometimes I have to kind of delete the text that is already there and then just re-enter it. It's not a huge sort of thing to work around, but it's definitely worth noting. So our next app is called Snapseed. Now this is a completely free app for iPad OS or iPhone. And whilst it doesn't have multi-layer support, it's such a good photo editing app that I had to include it. You know, if you just want to edit your photos on the go before you upload them to Instagram, maybe get out some blemishes, you know, repair some photos and then add some text, then this is the app for you. So let me jump into that now. So if we open up Snapseed here, uh, what I love about this is you don't really need the Apple Pencil for this. Uh, you can use your fingers and it works really, really well. So let's tap here to open an image. Let's just open it from the device. I'm gonna go to all photos and let's use this picture of an iPad. Now, what I like about this, it's just so, so simple. So up here, you've got a few different options. This is for some instant looks that you might have created before. Here, you've got your tool selection. So let's just say we wanna tune the image. You do have the option here to improve the details. You've got white balance, you've got healing options, you've got HDR options, uh, and you've got other options as well for lens blurs and adding text and things like that, which is great. But what I like about 
this app is how fast this is. So if we go to Tune Image, how you actually go through your settings is through an up and down menu. And then once you've selected the option, so let's just say we wanna bring the contrast up, you let go, and then you swipe left and right, and you'll see the bar at the top here, then controls the contrast. And so you can literally let go of your finger, and then you can jump between each section. And then we go to ambience, and you can see there's a huge difference there. So it's just a very, very fast way of going through and editing your photos. And as I say, I use this a lot when we're out about on the go, as it's just the quickest editor there is. There's like lens blur options here. So if we wanna add that, make it look like we used a really good lens on this, we can add that in there. You can tap and hold anywhere on the screen to see the before and after. I like that, let's tick okay. Let's add some text. It even has some kind of Instagram style text effects in here as well. So let's just say you wanna add that. Let's double tap to edit in there. iPad Pro 10.5, boom. And you've got a title there, which is pretty good. That could go straight onto Instagram. Super simple, we've edited that photo, added some text within a matter of seconds. And now you can export that as a JPEG, you can upload it, you can email it, do whatever you want. That's Snapseed in a nutshell. Okay, so the next app is called Affinity Photo. Now, whilst this is the most expensive app I'm gonna to recommend to you at $19.99, I think for that one-off payment, this is a seriously good app. It has a desktop app and an iPad app, and all of the features on the desktop version are available in the iPad version. It's so good. You can clone, it's got brushes, it's got unlimited layer support, support for CMYK. So if you're into print design, then this is the app for you. So let's jump into it. Okay, so let's open up Affinity Photo. Now what I like about this app is that it really feels like a fully functional desktop app. It doesn't feel like a mobile app that's been made for the iPad. So what we can do here, let's import from cloud again. Let's import that same thumbnail that we've been working on in Photoshop on the desktop. And you can see here, it's brought it in absolutely perfectly. You've got unlimited layers in Affinity Photo. And I think that's really, really good. If you're a, a kind of a Photoshop person that uses thousands or hundreds of layers, this is the app to go for. You know, I'm just kind of creating thumbnails, improving photos, things like that. So quite basic stuff, but it's great that you've got it here. You can see it's brought in the fonts as they should be. Uh, we can sort of edit the fonts here. We can select objects and move each one around independently. All the things you would expect from a Photoshop replacement. Um, you've got loads and loads of typo typography options. You can import new fonts. There's absolutely tons of fonts already installed on the program, which is really, really great to see. And then from a UI perspective, what I like is that you have different personas up here on the top corner, uh, sorry, the top left-hand corner of the screen. Now what a persona is essentially is a way of a sort of simplifying a workspace. So you can see here, it doesn't look like there's that many tools down the side here, but that's because we're in just one persona. If we change this, you can see we're now in the selections persona and all of the tools now change to selection tools. And then if we go to liquify, you'll see this now changes to a liquify, liquify persona. And then we can manipulate with the Apple Pencil, the iPad screen here. And you can see we can pull that in. And it's just so fast, you know, there's no lag in this program whatsoever. You can also work with uh, CMYK, which I think is a really, really great feature. So let's create a new project here, new document. And as you can see here, where it says color mode, a lot of other apps for the iPad, such as Pixelmator and even Photoshop do not support CMYK. This does. So if you work on print, if you're working on packaging, you can now do this within uh, Affinity Photo directly within the iPad. It just has great selection of uh, brushes as well. You can see here, you can scroll through, you've got drawing, you've got spray paints, texture brushes, everything that you would want and expect from a Photoshop alternative, basically. It's really worth delving into. There is quite a steep learning curve with this because if you've never used it before, um, it's, it's a little bit different from Photoshop. However, I think if you've used Photoshop before, you'll find this quite satisfying to use. And they've really used the I iPad screen uh, to its best ability. It looks absolutely fantastic. 
So that's Affinity Photo. And I think if you're using Photoshop on a daily basis and you really need that full selection of tools, then out of the four, I think this is probably the best one, but the next one I think is gonna surprise you. Okay, so the next app is a surprise for a lot of people who have never seen this before. This is called photop.com and it's almost a one-to-one -one replica of Photoshop and it's based within the browser. So as you'll see in a moment, the tools are in the same place as Photoshop, the menus are very similar, uh, it's completely free. There is a paid version if you wanna get rid of the ads on the side, but I think it's so cool, it's very easy to use. And until recently, until Apple released iPad OS, there was no way of actually accessing this on an iPad because it is in browser. Now it has a full desktop version of the Safari browser. You can access it and let me show you how it works. Okay, so let's open up PhotoP and all you need to do is type in photop.com and then the entire application loads within the browser. There's no app to install, no program to download and install. It just simply works. So let's uh, open the thumbnail the, that we've been working on. Let's open this, let's go to browse. Uh, let's open up the white one that they've been working on. And you can see here, it imports just fine. There's multiple layers here on the right hand side, just like Photoshop. You'll notice all of the menus and toolbars are almost identical to Photoshop as well. So let's just say that we want to control this iPad here. We can move this around. We can go to adjustments and uh, let's say we want to change the brightness and contrast just to show you how quick this is. You can see there, look at that, it's adjusting almost instantaneously. And bearing in mind, this is doing this through a web browser. I think that's pretty insane, so that's pretty cool. Let's click OK on that. Let's uh, adjust some of this text, shall we? So let's say, uh, let's change that. Alternative. See how easy it is to edit fonts and it hasn't changed our fonts as well these are the fonts that we used in adobe photoshop which is really cool uh, let's change let's just say let's just make a new background layer and let's fill in that with a gradient tool boom and it's done and that's how easy it is now what i like about this is you can actually import a psd or you can export as a psd as well so if we go save as a psd you can now download that thumbnail for .psd. So this is really, really surprisingly good for an in-browser application. As I say, it's completely free. We've paid uh, a little bit of a premium just to get the ads to go away as it fits better within the iPad's um, UI. But this is a great alternative for Photoshop if you're used to Photoshop and you just need to make some quick adjustments. You can also use the Apple Pencil too. So if we change this to the brush tool, now let's make this a larger brush. And then what I'm gonna do is just show you, if you draw with the Apple Pencil, if I put more pressure on the pencil, you can see it gets thick, uh, thicker. If I take the pressure away, it gets thinner. So even though this is going through the Safari browser, you've still got the Apple support for drawing and using brush tools, which is really cool. So there you go, they are my four alternatives to Photoshop on the iPad. What do you think of those? Let me know in the comments section below, especially if you've got any questions about any of them. I promise I do get back to every single comment. So I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, make sure you subscribe because we have plenty more videos just like this on the channel. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.